Hey, welcome to Wildlife. I'm really honored that you're here. I'm Craig Rochelle, and it's always powerful when men get together to sharpen one another to become everything that God wants us to become. Now, because you're here, I'm guessing that you're a person of influence. Probably a lot of people look to you, maybe in your business, in your home, uh, in your friendships. And if you're like me, sometimes you feel unprepared, like you don't have all the answers. In fact, as I go through life, so often I'm looking at where I am and not really satisfied, but thinking of where I want to be. I'm often projecting out into the future thinking, well, one day when I get to a certain point, then I'll have enough knowledge to really make a difference. Or one day when I achieve something, then I'll earn the respect of somebody else or at least feel successful about myself. Or one day when I get enough, then I can really be a blessing to others. Or one day when I finally get the education or hit the certain level, then I'll feel good about myself. But we need to recognize that God didn't call us to live one day when, but God called us to live now. In fact, Jesus said this in John 10, 10, he said, there's a thief, our spiritual enemy, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and life to the full. In fact, I hope that you're here gathering together with other men because you really want the life that God wants you to have, life to the full. Not a halfway life, not a partially lived life, not a I wanna do everything in my bucket list life, but I'm gonna take my bucket and pour it out, like Paul said, a life poured out to make a difference in this world. I wanna live the full life that God wants me to live. If you've ever felt dissatisfied, if you ever thought there must be something more, if you've ever felt inadequate and thought maybe one day I'll be able to achieve whatever it is, this is the perfect group for you. Jesus didn't die just to save us from hell, but he also died that we may have life and life to the full. In fact, we've gathered a group of men, really just like you, to answer the question, what is it like to live fully? I wanna give them a chance to discuss as they're transparent and open. I know that you will be as well. And then together with the help of Jesus, we can live life to the full. So with that, let's all pray. Father, we ask that as we learn from others and more importantly, we learn from you, God, that you would conform us to the image of your son, Jesus, that we would not live a self-centered, half-hearted life, but because of the grace of Jesus, God, you would empower us to live a life to the full. Bless these men, God. Use them for your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. So seven of us guys got together. We've asked off work, rented a house, and set aside a few days to figure this out. How can we really know God? What does that look like in our everyday lives? And how can we start really living? Wow, Pastor Craig, that was amazing. Thank you so much for opening us up here today. My name is Will Coleman, and I'm glad to be here today sharing with these men that are here. I love what Pastor Craig said, though. He said in John 10, 10, we don't just want to get through life, but we want to start really living. And that's what we want to do here today. You know, we are seven men that are like every guy that's probably watching here today. Right. We're not perfect. Yep. We're men that are trying to run businesses, lead our families, be better husbands, be better fathers. Mm -hmm. But we also struggle with pain from our past, with yeah. addictions, mm -hmm. with hurt, just like you here today. And so we want to share kind of what we've gone through over this past week. We've yeah. spent a few days together, got to know each other a little bit more. If you guys could all go through, take about 15 to 20 seconds to introduce yourselves, tell us your name, relationship status, kids, if you got them, uh, and then just something interesting about you that can kind of open this whole thing up. So go ahead. Yeah, so my name's Ronnie, and uh, my wife and I, Janet, have been married for 32 years. We have three daughters and uh, three grandsons, which has been absolutely fantastic. We love life. God's just been so good to us. Um, I'm just gonna, my wife says that I accessorize really well. <laughs> <laughs> like scarves? Like, not scarves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it right there. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> my name's Jay Mays, and uh, I've been married for seven years in November. We have a two-year-old daughter, Remy. 
with another one on the way, uh, Christmas Eve. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I can make an incredible loaf of banana bread, but cannot change the oil in my car. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Tony Foster Jr. Um, let's see, I'm 31. Recently divorced, I have two kids, uh, Ava Marie and Aurora. And um, so I roll up my pants legs because I had a growth spurt when I was about 26 and grew about three inches. <laughs> but now my pants are too short. Um, so I'm just, just messing with you guys. Well, I'm Jason Inman, uh, married. My wife, Christy, have been married for 10 years. We've got five kids, which is crazy. And uh, I was just thinking something kind of weird. I like chick flicks. And I've never told my wife that. So. <laughs> She's gonna find out right now. So. Uh, Trey Dixon, my wife and I have been married for 22 years. Um, three boys, uh, two teenage boys and one junior high. And I love doing adventurous stuff, skydiving. I've been uh, you know, scuba diving. Um, yet all that, and I drive a chick car. So it's kind of, you know. <laughs> What is it? I, it's, I mean, it's, it's a two-door Nissan Altima. Yeah. yeah, thank you. That's thank your you. gas mileage, though. It does get your gas mileage, that's right. <laughs> I'm uh, Clay Steves. My wife, Kirsten, and I have been married for 13 years. We've got uh, six kiddos. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my 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 thing is, I probably cry every single week in worship at church. So yeah, uh huh. All right, all right. Well, hey, thank you guys for all sharing here today. So I want to start us off with a, a question here. Uh, how do you all typically feel about getting together with another group of men and opening up, or being in a in a life group with other men? Well, I'll just be honest, like. Uh, part of my job has to do with life groups. Like I work at a church yeah, and I'm scared of them. Like I, as a guy, I'm like, man, I don't want to go sit with, in some cases, it's like a couples group, sit with like other couples and just talk about stuff. Like that's why, I, even with my own wife at the end of the day, she's like, how was your day? I'm like, uh, well, you know, so, <laughs> right. yeah. uh, it's not an yeah. easy thing yeah. for me, yeah. uh, the idea of it. The more I've done it, I see the value of it, but it takes a bit. It takes a second for me to get used yeah, to the idea. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, I would say for me, for most of my life, I actually avoided any kind of deep, really, connection uh, with other men. I had a lot of friends, guys that I'd go do stuff with, hang out with, have a drink with, but nobody that I'd actually connect with. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't until hitting a low point in my life that I actually put some guys around me, and now it's absolutely invaluable and one of the most mm -hmm. important things in my life. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the, I was the same way. You know, I feel like I get in a group and I'm like, I, I could share, but I don't know. I want somebody else to kind of open this thing up because how, are they going to try to test me or see, you know, how manly I am? And so I'm always a little, you know, kind of standoffish at first. Yeah. But uh, anybody else? Yeah, just for me, like the idea of, um, you know, opening up to other guys about stuff that, you know, I kind of keep internalized just makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, just because it might get it might get weird, you know? It might, it might get a little bit different than what it normally would be. Not quite locker room conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, it might so, get chick flicky. There you go. <laughs> Some tears might, you know? <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Come on, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you can help me pick out a scarf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that I, I've really enjoyed this week is that we've all kind of been in this life group pressure cooker this yeah. whole week. We've yeah. had an opportunity to, to share some, some deep things, some light things all together. Yeah. And so how do you, differently do you all feel now versus maybe when we first got together earlier in the week? You know, for, for me, um, you know, we're always meeting people. But I feel like like this morning even, I got a, uh, Clay sent me a deal to be friends on Uversion. And I hit that, but I felt like, man, I know this guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we hadn't, right. we hadn't spent a lot of time together, but the time we've spent has been intentional right. and intense. And yeah. uh, you, you walk away from it and saying, I've got, I got someone I could call. I got yeah. someone, friends. I've got some men here yeah. That, yeah. that I know. Yeah, uh, that's what it's been for me. It's been fantastic. It's good. I don't feel as isolated. You know what I mean? Because yeah. as we've opened up and as everyone else has shared, it it connects. Because I'm battling some of the same stuff, and so I don't feel like I'm alone in fighting those battles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So that's been incredibly valuable for me. You it's know, good. one thing that, that I really liked about this week is I've never been in a, in a setting like this. Yeah. So I feel like now I can take everything I've learned back to my, my guys and my life group and, yeah. you know, make it that much better. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I'd say it really drives home we're not alone, man. Yeah. As we've been talking about so many different things, to find out so many of us have battled the same things and that yeah. we're not alone. And so many times in my life, I felt like I was the only one screwing up and the only yep. one that yeah. felt this way yeah. and realized we're all jacked up to a degree. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah. but yeah. there's actually some comfort and peace in that and knowing that, man, we're all struggling with it and there's guys that you can lean on. Yeah. 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 One of the struggles that we kind of talked about was being caught in this performance treadmill. Mm -hmm. And it was actually something that you share, Clay, that, that kind of really stuck out to me. Can you just share with us, like what that's been like for you to be in this performance driven thing. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I was actually placed for adoption right after I was born and my, I don't know my, my biological father. Yeah. And so I've kind of wrestled this tension where I have to perform to be chosen because I've got this root of I wasn't chosen at the beginning. Now, you know, some of the great stuff that you guys fed back to me is the whole, yeah, but my, my heavenly father has chosen me. That's where I can perform from that, not for my dad to choose me, but that's kind of the, the root of why I've, I've battled needing, needing people to choose me and doing that off of my performance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Was there anyone else that like you really connected with that too? Oh, absolutely. You know, we talked about the gap and, and filling the gap and the performance wheel. And, you know, that whole, that whole scenario was just like really hit home, yeah. you know, because you try so hard to, you know, take those moments and, and fill them with other things. And, you know, all it really takes is trusting in God and knowing that you're going to get through it. And that's it. Mm -hmm. I, it's actually been a hard week this week for me, not because of our conversations. That's actually helped, mm -hmm. but it's just been difficult life situations. And I was talking with my wife about this, about the idea of the, the have to mindset we talked about a couple days ago, of the things in my life that I think I have to do because if I don't, then I'm gonna let other people down or I won't be liked or uh, I have to yeah. get this project done or I have to be at this thing or I have to say yes rather than a want to uh, that comes from like knowing where my value's at Mm -hmm. And man, I needed that this week more than like I have in a long time. Yeah. So. yeah, that's really good. I thought about another one of the things that we talked about was struggling with addiction, yeah. right? And yeah. hitting rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us shared a little bit about a point where you just, it just really hits you. Like, I, how did I get here? And so can we kind of just talk through like, what are some of the things that you wish you knew then that you know now? Hmm. You know, one of the things that, that I wish that I knew then that I know now is I didn't have to do it alone. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, that's, that's probably the biggest thing that I've learned is that, man, it, if, if you're going through something like this, and I'm just going to go out and say, not if, hmm. uh, you are. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we, that's, we, right. that's one thing that, this week has proven is that we're all in something. Yeah. Don't do it by yourself. Yeah. Don't do it by yourself. Yeah. I, I would say that, that uh, these guys know, but I actually went to a funeral just about two hours ago uh, mm -hmm. for a longtime friend that struggled with addiction, alcohol, sexual addiction, um, and took his own life. Mm -hmm. And because he felt isolated, he felt exactly like that, that he felt like he was alone. Um, and I know for me in my story, felt like I'd married the wrong person uh, mm -hmm. shortly after getting married. And so for the first 15 years of our marriage, pornography affairs, um, till it led me at a point about eight years ago where I was sitting in a house with a 45 in my mouth mm -hmm. and um, hitting that bottom point um, mm -hmm. because I was alone, because I hadn't reached out to anybody else. Um, and I hadn't been open, honest, and transparent to once I was able to move past that and and be open, be honest, have a group like this. Um, life has just been unbelievable how much better walking with God in transparency with that has been amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think if I could go back and talk to me at rock bottom, I would tell myself that the journey out of there is full of lots of very small steps. Yeah. And so start with one step. Don't, don't think about you have to do it all yeah. to get out, right? Yeah. Take the one step that's yeah. right in front of you. Take the one step that's right in front of you and just win that one thing. 
yeah. and that can take you on the, the trajectory of God, help pull you out of, yeah. out of that rock bottom. Really so, I remember there was something that, Tony, you said about like giving yourself grace yeah. that I think a lot of us struggle with. Could you share a little bit about yeah, we, that? Yeah, we just, we just kind of talked about um, trusting the idea that, that sanctification or the process of getting through these struggles isn't a consecutive deal. It's not you you win so many consecutive days and you get a prize. No, you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes. Yeah, right. You're gonna hit pitfalls, you're gonna struggle. Sometimes you're gonna relapse a little bit, but it's just a matter of understanding that God's grace is sufficient. And yeah. if you recognize that early on, mm -hmm. if you commit to the idea that you're gonna make mistakes, but as long as you stay focused and you stay um, you know, you, you understand that God's grace is going to forgive all of that. Um, then, then you'll you'll look back and you'll realize you've made the progress. You know, without without thinking that you have have had to have done it, you know, consecutively without any mistakes whatsoever. So yeah, that's good. So I was addicted to porn um, from first time I saw it, thirteen maybe, up into college. And uh, if I could talk to myself at the worst time, I would have said that, and it's never too late. There so yeah. like when I finally realized that, man, if I looked at something I shouldn't, yeah, um, that doesn't mean, oh, now I already lose, so I give in, it's over, right. you know, maybe one day I'll try again. No, I can stop right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. I can accept that grace right now. It's never too late. And you kind of catch yourself earlier and earlier and earlier until, man, it's been more than 10 years for me to where I've gotten to the point where I'm catching myself uh, way before I ever get there. Yeah, and I shouldn't say I'm catching myself. The Holy Spirit, you God is, is helping me to see that. Yeah. So it's yeah. never too late, no matter what the issue is. Yeah. It's never too late. Never, never. I think one of, I was the same boat. Pornography was a struggle for pretty much all of my 20s late teens, all of my 20s. And one of the things that I wish that I knew then was that how powerful God's word is. And mm -hmm. most of the time I was telling myself, just say no, just say no, just don't do it. Right. And that never worked. Right. But understanding that I can use God's word as a weapon, as the, as the, as the sword, you know, and I can use that, you know, Jude 24 talks about how he's able to keep me from falling. And I can use that in those moments of temptation to help me overcome at yeah. that point. That's and well, that's the bringing light into the dark places in our life. Yeah. And, and we, we often, I did for so many years, look at porn or have an affair and go, I'm never gonna do it again, that's it. Mm -hmm. And what I was doing was focusing on the darkness. Yeah. I was trying to tell myself, I'm gonna turn down the darkness. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't control darkness. Mm -hmm. You can only control light. And to get rid of darkness, you have to turn on the light. You have to expose light yeah. to it, and it yeah. chases. The darkness yeah. flees. Yeah, and so by bringing God's word, you're yeah. bringing light into the darkness that's in our life. And that's the only way it goes. We can't turn down darkness. You can only turn up the light. Yeah. And bringing Christ and bringing his word, bringing accountability, bringing confession and repentance, that's how that chases away the darkness. Yeah, that's so powerful. I've, a few of us have mentioned specifically pornography. So something I want us to do just by a show of hands, because I know all of us have struggled with some type of addiction, but I want to specifically focus on sexual addiction. Raise your hand if you've ever been addicted to some type of sexual sin. Okay. Yeah. So there's what five of the seven of us have dealt with that. And I specifically want to talk to every man that's watching this right now that feels like you are gonna struggle with this for the rest of your life. You are now watching five men that have all been where you have been yeah. and have overcome. That's yeah. right. So this is not something that you have to deal with the rest of your life, nor is it something you have to deal with on your own. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you go. Get yeah. help, get yeah. community, yeah. get around people who they can shine the light of Christ yeah. into your darkness as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's that's awesome. awesome. And I appreciate you guys sharing yeah. that particular uh, struggle uh, as well. And so, Ronnie, in one of our conversations, you talked about how you basically ended up broke. And, and your, your, your addiction may have been a little bit different from ours, but it was your rock bottom. Uh, and you were, you were saying you had, you had hit a point in your life where you were successful, and then you wound up being broke, living back with your mother-in-law and having to just die to your pride. And so now you're a pastor at a church. And can you just talk to us a minute about two things that God did in you 
during that particular time. Yeah, you know, um, and, and just to give a real quick uh, history, I've been in ministry for uh, almost 38 years. And um, at this particular time in my life, which was in 2008, I'd stepped away from ministry really just because of burnout, because I felt like I was just doing it to make a living. I felt like it, it, it just, I'd lost all of my passion for it. Yeah. And kind of simultaneously with that season was um, a time where we just lost really everything. And I felt like an absolute, complete failure in that season of my life. And a lot of it was due to um, credit card spending addiction uh, mm -hmm. that had put us financially in the place that we were in. And so um, that really was my struggle. And, um, but during that season, uh, I remember one day, I was specific day, I'll never forget it, I was working at Walmart. And if you go into a Walmart today, at two o'clock in the afternoon, they do this thing called zoning. And you'll know exactly what's happening when I tell you. So if you go on the canned food aisle, they'll be pulling all the cans and everything up to the front so yeah. it looks like it's full. That's called zoning. And one day I was doing that and God just gently spoke to me and said, that's how you've lived your life. Hmm. Hmm. You've just pulled everything up to the front wow. so that it all looks good. But inside I knew it wasn't all good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for men, that's so true right. for us. Yeah. Uh, and, and the other thing that God did for me during that season of my life was not only did he show me my pride in that area, but he also helped me to realize in my own self that my success wasn't measured by a financial level. Yeah. My success was measured by my walk with him and particularly with my family, because during that season, I received a really powerful email from my daughter that verified that as a father, and as a husband, I had been an example. And I think we can get into a trap where we're measuring success um, by how much we're making. You know, let's think about when we get together as men, isn't that generally what the question is? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you what know, you how's do? your job? What do you, yeah. how, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you know, and we're talking about our house, our car, we're measuring everything out here instead of the eternal things that matter yeah. to God. So those are the two things that God, I think, really showed me in that season and then out of that season, you know, I'm just humble and amazed because here I sit today as a pastor at Life Church and back doing what God called me to do, but with a completely different heart yeah. and a completely different uh, uh, motive in me in doing that. And, it, you know, those seasons are not wasted. Right? Yeah. Uh, they're hard, but That's they're good. not wasted. Yeah. 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 And That's that was good. how that season was for me. That's good. It's really good. You know, Thank you for sharing that one and just everybody getting to share parts of, of your stories as well. One of the best parts about this whole time was the connection, yeah. you know, whether it was throwing axes, whether it was eating, <laughs> eating food. Appreciate that, by the way, Jay, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but all of that, it was, it was powerful for us all and we're all better now from that. And I think our, our hope is, is that any guy that's watching this will take some of those same steps that we did. Yeah. Yeah. Getting vulnerable. At first, it's saying, okay, I can't do this alone. Yeah. Getting in with another group of men, finding a group of men that they can uh, be held accountable to, yeah. but then also just open up and yeah. be honest about it. Yeah. And yeah. so, and in case there's ever a guy that gets relocated, you know, we've got a, a Bible plan that they can download. They can watch the, the videos that we're going to show here in a little bit as well. Uh, but I think all of us, you know, we know other men that need to see this too. Yeah. Yeah. And so whether they're watching it, whether it's us, we can all take that step to make sure that we stay in community, that we stay connected. Mm -hmm. But right now we're gonna go back to Pastor Craig uh, as he continues to pour into men and invest in men. Appreciate you guys sharing. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'm guessing you would agree that there's something powerful that happens when men come together and they're real when they're transparent and when they're vulnerable. The problem is most men don't ever sit around and say, hey bro, let's get together and be real. Let's be transparent, let's be vulnerable. Uh, for most of us, our implied image is, hey, let's be tough, let's be cool, let's show that we have it all together. But the truth is, guys, let's just be honest. We do not have it all together. And the truth is, on our own, we are incredibly vulnerable. God didn't wire us to be spiritually successful as an isolated man, but God wired us to need one another, to sharpen each other with iron. 
I want to just encourage you uh, to do something bold and do something that I believe can really change the trajectory of your life. I want to encourage you to take a step to get involved in a wildlife men's group. Uh, we'll have more information about how you can do that, but to be real, to be transparent, to be vulnerable with other men of God, to let them sharpen you to become all that God wants you to become. Remember, God doesn't want you to live a self-centered, half-hearted life, but He wants you to live a life to the full. You are not designed to do it alone. You need other men to sharpen them. I encourage you, take the step. A wildlife men's group, and I'm gonna pray that God would lead you to the right group. Father, thank you for the men that you've gathered. Direct our steps that we could know others to sharpen them and to be sharpened by them to become all you want us to be. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.